Well, Mr. Match, everybody's been looking forward to all week long. The winner's going to take the trophy and check for our inaugural tournament in 1996. Bob Learn looking for title number three. Great way to start. That is. That's just about as hard as he can throw a bowling ball right there. And another player that likes to plant the foot, pull it through, and get as much on it as he can. Wayne Webb. And another another player that's kind of vertically challenged, right? Right. Ten strikes in his opening game. Just phenomenal ball. Interesting how you relax just a hair and the speed is not quite the same and you leave that four pin. Well, fortunate that the ball isn't cutting through and leaving four nines, which, you know, that high hit uh, for these new bowling balls, these resin reactives, chances are it could... Uh, Cut well, we see here the most common spare miss of all pins of the single pin spare is the four pin. Is that because the oil in the middle of the lane so many times? Well, I would think so. I'm sure you would feel that way, don't you? Well, I don't know. I never missed a four pin. Before. Well, it's because you never <laughs> left. You always carried them. Yeah, I had a triple. I had to do that to average 180. Anyway, Wayne Webb, uh, if anybody can leave that four nine, it'd be him. He gets plenty on it. There's no question he can make the ball rotate. But he's trying to cut that down, uh, the rotation, and keep the ball in play more often with end over end roll and, and not the big hook. Well, he's got to get his act back together, right? Regroup a little bit here. Yeah, and get the uh, adrenaline going again. Maybe, like you said, he's relaxed a little bit, and maybe he's feeling, uh, you know, it's been seven long years for Wayne Webb. Even though he won here his last win in 1989, he's probably feeling a little pressure out there. He's, he's been struggling with his game. He's, as I mentioned, he's worked extremely hard. Tough spare, the two of the four. Three, three, six, I mean, excuse me. And there's Dave D'Antrima. Won here last time. Any second in the voting for player of the year this past year. Close voting, too. Very close voting. Mm -hmm. Bob Warren wants to get off to a quick early start. Well, he knows Wayne Webb's capable of the big game. And he's given it everything he can, ball speed wise. I'll tell you what, he almost went with that one. Kind of like Jim Brown there walking back. I mean, <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you never thought Brown was ever going to get up, you know. Well, Bob here just taking his time coming back. Well, he's getting so much energy and going the other direction, it's probably hard to come back upstream, you know. <laughs> A lot of time. Talked about the four nine. Well, I felt it had to come. And, and there's his wife Stacy. She says, No, not now. I just felt it had to come. It's the only reason I was mentioning it, Mike, and it's uh, because the balls are coming in so high. Is he gonna go for it? He's gotta go for it. It's early in the match, he's gotta take a shot at it. Slide the four into the nine. Just shoot the seven pin spot. It was never made on TV last year, and so far in ninety six it's not made yet either. Well, that's the kind of break that makes a champion out of somebody, and Wayne Webb got that break. Three great shots from Bob Learn Jr. to start the match. Two strikes, and then the pocket split to 4-9. Wayne Webb still match. searching for the pocket. Boy, he left the four pin here last time. Here's another look at it halfway down the lane, and this gave this one lots of room, Mike. Got it back. The ball didn't hit extremely hard, but it got the job done. The five into the seven, and the six just kind of lays on the ten. And he likes it. Guess he does. Oops. I wonder where he goes to get his hair. That was the same place you do as he doubles up. There he goes. Well, maybe he's decided he's like Samson. There you go. That's his strength, you think? That's yeah. very possible. Right. Twelve pins of difference. Learn. Fourth frame. Well, new executive director of the Professional Bowlers Association, Mark Gerbrick. He's probably getting a little sage advice from Dick Weber sitting there on his left. Did you notice that? Well, fatherly advice, maybe? Or... Well, I think Weber was, he's a, you know, he's a uh, 
Midwest uh, Regional Director, right? Well, he's also one of the founding players, you know, one of the charter members, charter charter members of the PBA. Well, Bob Learn on lane 37 has to uh, try and get it back in the pocket so he can get striking to catch up. Snapper, and I wonder who that is. Huh? Yeah. That's my youngest son there, new managing uh, editor of the Bowling Center Management Magazine, the Good BPA's magazine. Good-looking young man. He must look like, looks like, like his, his mother, mother right? <laughs> <laughs> you got it. <laughs> okay, Wayne Webb, back in control, chance to expand his lead. Ooh, that's that little balk he makes box. because sometimes he doesn't feel comfortable. Remember, he's made that six steps instead of five. Kelly Gary Asher, doesn't matter how many steps he strikes. That's great. And, uh, players are allowed two re-racks in each game on a televised portion of a tournament. And Wayne Webb, I believe, has used both of his, Mike. Well, you know, I always figured I'd, I'd use them when I had a string going. I wanted to keep that string going. I mean, you know, I'd use them up then, and if I kept the string going, the right re racks were left in the bag, so to speak, as he leaves the 2 8. We've seen that before. That's the fourth one we've seen tonight. Something bothered Wayne there. He came back, and uh, I don't know what it was, something in the audience. It could be any little thing. When, when the players are on the approach, uh, it's, it's deathly quiet in the bowling center. You can hear a pin drop, and then any sound at all can interrupt their concentration. At the two-way. Perfect. But Bob Lurin has a chance to get back in this match if he can strike a couple of times. Down 20 pins right now. He plans, Bob plans to bowl a full schedule this year. I mean, he's going to bowl every event possible. The only one he's planning to skip is, I think, one in, like, in Tucson or something later on. Pretty shot there. He's amazing, I tell you. For a little guy, he sure can get the ball speed and the rotation on it. He just gives it everything he's got. I, I don't know how he gets out of bed in the morning. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's youth. He's only, what, 33? 32, 33, yeah. Just, just a baby. Just to even the match, the seventh frame. Right in the middle of the lane. He kind of got surprised. Leaves the 3 6. Looking down at the approach, like maybe he lost his footing or something. We'll take another look at that. Here's Bob at the foul line. And he does uh, look like he slips a little, Mike, and that'll cost you your leverage right there. And that means no ball speed. He can't get the ball down the lane. Tough spare on these conditions, especially. Switches to this other ball that goes straighter. Fox right at it. No trouble. 